Well, good morning, everybody. Feels good to be back in church. It feels good to be back up here to teach Sunday school again. Kayla, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Well, I'm going to talk about something. Even though I've laid up for a couple of weeks sick, but the guy was talking to me about this lesson. And with everything that's going on with what happened in Washington, D.C., this coronavirus and other viruses that's going along that really people are catching, but they ain't saying nothing to it about the news. Me, I had a severe case of bronchitis. But you don't hear that on the news. All you hear is the COVID. So there's others, other things going on out there that people are getting sick by besides just the coronavirus. So keep them all in prayer. So we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to start at the 10th verse. And what we're going to be talking about here is putting on the whole armor of God. And that, this is uh, something very spiritual that you do. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And this day and time, everything's going on. The wiles of the devil is flying strong and hard so you need to be strong in the lord to keep those from happening we for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of, of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and lord have mercy there's a lot of that in high places uh, you can't even turn on the news without hearing something like that. Matter of fact, you can't even go to the movies without even watching something like that. Wherefore, take on, to, take on to you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. In this day and time, well, what's going on today, Evil is everywhere. No matter where you look, it is evil everywhere. And Satan, <clears throat> Satan is working very hard right now to discourage every Christian out there. Trying to, with, with what they're doing, what missions they're doing, they're making people, he's making people sick to keep them from doing the job. It might have slowed Solid Rock down a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it didn't stop it. All right. This is Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with the truth and have the breastplate of righteousness. What he's talking about here with the loins is right around here. Keep yourself good and the breastplate of righteousness. That's to protect you. It's something similar to the uh, Roman uniform, uh, what they had to wear. Um, their breastplate was made of heavy leather. And it probably weighed a few pounds, so marching. And, and their loins were girded with leather also to protect them. So that we're talking something similar to that, but... This is a spiritual thing you do. And to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Be able to walk with peace. Let's see. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? Anybody? Huh? 
God's word, yeah. God's word as your shield of faith. And Lord, we've, I know we've seen a lot of that in this church, a lot of the faith going on. Yeah. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is Word of God. Here's your sword right here. This is your sword. You open this up, Satan starts getting a headache. You start reading it, he's like, no, no, no. But when you're really getting into it and let nothing else bother you, he goes running out that door. He says, he don't like it. You turn your back on Satan, he loses his power. You push, your power comes from the word of God, the, 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 the whole armor of God. Pray always with a prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all preference and supplication for the saints. Praying constantly. Paul said, pray without ceasing. That don't mean you go down the road with your eyes closed while you're driving. But you can pray with your eyes open. You can pray while you're going down the road. Me, Mom, and Dad done that plenty of time when we traveled together. We'd come up on an accident, and all three of us would start praying right there while Mom was driving through it, praying for the people in it. You pray for yourselves. You pray for your friends. You pray for your loved ones. You pray for your church. And for me, in utterance, may be given unto me that I might open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel. If you ever have gone through Walmart lately and just don't say nothing, just walk through there and just listen. There are more times in there they're cussing God than anything else. And it's a shame. It's a shame what this world has turned into. God is more than anything you can do. These people don't understand what they're doing. When they're cursing God, they don't understand a single thing they're doing. I know I was in there one time once before, and somebody behind me gave God a last name. I turned and looked at him and said, God don't have no last name. And I'm going to pray for you for saying that. I'm going to pray for your soul. He goes, oh, you're one of those holy rollers, huh? And just like that, I just did straight faced. Uh, yeah, well, I'd rather roll into heaven than bounce into hell. Ended up praying for that man in the middle of the store. And there have been plenty of times me and mom, all dad been traveling, be going, going on a trip, say, visit Allen and Kayla in Georgia, and we'd stop somewhere, and we'd get a phone call from Dave and Miss Donna. Somebody's sick right there in the middle of the store where all three of us holding hands and praying. And when we stopped praying, all these people are like, huh? Are they out of their minds doing that in the middle of the store? No, nah, I'm not ashamed to pray for to God in the middle of a store, restaurant, and nowhere. I believe God said, if you be ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. So ain't no need to do that. Put your whole armor of God on. And this day and time, we need it. Especially what happened, what, what was it, last Wednesday? Up in D.C. where the, they 
broke into the White House and all. I mean, I can understand standing up for your rights and all like that, but that's taking it just a little too far. A little too far, way too far. It also says here that, and for me the utterance may be given unto me that I might openly open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds. We are all ambassadors to God. We represent him. When we are out in public, they are looking at us like, what, is this man or woman truly a Christian? Are they really living the Christian life? You got to do it by example. Everything you do out there, when you become a Christian, it's like being in a fishbowl. Everybody's watching you. And what they don't realize is sometimes a Christian does slip and fall. And then they're like, uh huh, I told you he wasn't real. No. What that Christian does when he slips and falls is get back up and ask God for forgiveness and keep on going. And therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We have to speak boldly about God, especially in this day and time. With what's going on in the world. I mean, 250,000 armed soldiers to protect Biden when he takes the oath. They're not going to have the normal crowd around there like they normally do because of all the evil that's going on. Me, I've just been praying and praying and praying for him. Granted, I don't like a lot of his policies, but he is going to be the president-elect. But we still need to pray for him. But that he also may, may, may know my affairs and how I do. Uh, Texas, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that you may know our affairs and that he might comfort your heart. We are all ambassadors of God. We wear the armor of God to protect us from the wiles of the devil. So when you get up in the morning, don't forget to put it on. He is there to protect us. We are there to spread his word and his love. Now, since last Wednesday... Uh, before, even before all of that came up, when they were doing the riots last year and all like that, all you heard was Antifa and BLM. Now they did this little thing in Washington, D.C., but you didn't hear nothing about Antifa or BLM. Why? Why didn't you hear about them? A lot of people believe they were paid to get stuff started last year. Maybe they did. All we can do is speculate on it. But us as a church, a church family, as, as part of the body of Christ, wear your suit of armor, that armor of God who will protect you. Read your Bible. That's your sword against the devil. The more you get into the book, the less the Satan's going to mess with you. Oh, he's going to try his best anyhow. He's going to try his hardest. I, I believe there's a TV show, you tried your best, but your best ain't good enough. 
Yeah. Satan, you can try your best, but your best ain't good enough. Uh, like like uh, uh, one comedian said, I cheated. I read the last chapter. I know who wins. We all know who's going to win this battle. But we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared for it. So make sure you wear your armor, God. Read your word. Live it like you can't, like like you never lived anything before. Because this is your salvation. This is your key to heaven. You get your armor of God, you get your sword, and them all together is your key to salvation. All you have to do is ask God to save your soul, to lift you up when you're down. Now me, Alan and Kayla, all three were sick at the same time. Some of us don't even know how many days has gone by being sick, right Kayla? But the church prayed for us. Church members brought us food and drinks. Although most of the time I didn't know what was going on about that. As soon as I wake up, I take me a drink or something, and right back off to sleep I went. But this church prayed for us. And we were healed. And we are here now. God is not still in the healing business. A lot of people don't think that now because they're coming up with these more and more numbers of the coronavirus infection and more and more people dying from it. Granted, I believe there are some people who get, do get sick from it. I'm not going to knock that. But sometimes I wonder well, when they're showing this, all this information on the news and I got to noticing a whole lot of it. They keep showing the same pictures every day. The same thing every day. They're not showing nothing new about what's going on in these hospitals. They're showing the same thing that they filmed a week ago. They're still trying to put that fear into God, fear, of, uh, fear into you. Well, to let y'all know, I ain't afraid because I got God on my side. I'm wearing his armor, I'm reading his word, and I'm letting him do the healing. Let us pray. Our dear most gracious heavenly father, we thank you for this message, Lord. And Lord, I just ask now that you heal all that are sick, Lord. Brother Nicky's still in the hospital, Lord. I just ask that you put your healing hands on him and touch him. And lift him up and touch Sister Kathy that she be relieved to know when he wakes up and say, uh, hello, darling. Lord, we just miss him being here in church. We miss his laughter. We miss them all together. Lord, there's others out there that are sick also. Lord, we just ask you to touch you, take your healing hand and touch their bodies. Get rid of this coronavirus, the bronchitis, all the flu virus, everything that's going around, Lord. We just ask that you get rid of it all and heal this land to where we can turn back to you, Lord, and, and follow you. A lot of us has not stopped. And as far as this, I know this church, we are not stopping following you, Lord. And Lord, we just ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen.